working? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, first of all, for inviting me here today. So it's been a pleasure, big pleasure. And uh, I'm sure you all know this title, TB or not TB, but it has a special meaning for me because when I was writing this uh, presentation, which is kind of unusual, usually I either talk about science or either talk about women, but no, never in the same talk, so I, I'll try my best. I hope it's not too much science, but still enough, and about my personal life, whatever. You'll tell me anyway. And uh, Anne <laughs> said to me, I sent her a very scientific title, and she said, oh, you can go wild, find something else. <laughs> so I came up with TV or not TV, but there is a story behind, because you will see I'm a biologist. No one is perfect, I'm not a physicist, sorry. And I worked for many years and since now on tuberculosis, which is a disease, and, but also have three babies. So uh, combining both, I thought that would be a good title. And so now let's go and, and <laughs> the first slide would be my life. Basically when I made that slide, I realized that all my life went in one slide. A bit scary at first, but you will see it's a good resume. So I did all my undergraduate in France and uh, at the end of my master in 1997, I realized when I was reading publications, so it's nothing glamorous about going abroad to do my PhD, but just that I couldn't read one word in English. I mean, it was not complaining about the French system, but I realized at that point that if I wanted to become a researcher, it would be really convenient to speak English. Some you know, problems, you know, fluent people like in England or whatever don't have. So then I decided to apply for a fellowship in the John Innes Center, which I got. And actually that was the best move I have to say I made in my life, even if my parents were not really keen on letting me go at that time, even if my dad is a scientist himself. And then I spent three fantastic years over there. And then after this, I applied for an EMBO fellowship, then to go uh, perform my um, postdoc at Harvard University in Richard's Lozic lab. And then I came back to France at one point, where I uh, joined the lab of Alain Cozon in Lyon. So that's for the first part. But there is a conclusion for this first part. I mean, not a conclusion, a beginning, is that I had my first baby. You know, uh, I started six months pregnant going to the US at Harvard. And Probably I was naive or insane, whatever. I heard everything, but they were saying, you are totally mad. You're six months pregnant. You're going to Harvard with a big fellowship. You are going to die. It's, it's, it's not possible. And thanks to my uh, 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 professor there, which was really nice. Actually, my son spent his first year of life in his office crawling because he was the only one with carpet on the floor. So he was just as simple as that. But thanks for him. And the, to summarize the key point during this first part of my career, when I look back, now I feel like a senior scientist, is that I had fantastic mentors, really, really, and that they were male, well, and, and they were always encouraging and pushing me and saying you with one late motive, which was you, were, you have to go beyond the master and then you can move. And they were not jealous, whatever. They, they did that for all their students, male or female. So I'd like to thank them also. And then I uh, went back to France, like I said, I got my CNRS position and uh, then I had baby two, I stopped now, you know, everything was going fine, I could manage postdoc and a baby, so baby two, and then a baby three, and I, I moved forward with my uh, upper grade, you know, I stopped there. Okay, <laughs> I stopped at three. <laughs> and then the big year was in 2010, where I got the CNRS bronze medal, thanks to the CNRS for that, which is encouraging wrong researcher and to tell us that we, we work well so far, so keep carry on. And I also got this specific program, which we call ATIP Avenir in France, which is compulsory to move to set up your own lab. So I moved from Lyon to Montpellier, and it gives you money and, and uh, funding to set up your own lab. So for me, that was a big, you know, I was alone now and I had to set up my lab, which uh, I did hopefully well, because they gave me the research director position a few backs later. And uh, I got the SAFIPRA funding and I really wanted to put here because it's not because I'm front of SAFIPRA, but honestly, without the SAFIPRA funding, you know, five years after setting up the ATIP Avenue funding, which was over, it's only uh, for five years, without SAFIPRA, I'm not sure the lab will still be in life today. So thanks, thanks again. And uh, to summarize that, during that time I supervised, I realized that it's not looking like on the screen over there. I was asking times to put some gray shade and it's not going out. Anyway, you won't have the gray shade. So I spent, uh, 
obviously time to supervise trainees, PhD, postdoc, and I realized that mentoring, I wanted to give back what I had during my first year, and I think it's really important, and my contribution so far to women in science, trying to, you know, and then turn the lab to help them, and especially like we discussed this morning, I realized that the, the postdoc, the transition between the PhD and the postdoc was really critical to decide where you have to go. No need to tell you that going to Harvard University is like a stamp, you need that stamp, you know, fortunately or unfortunately. Unfortunately, and it's very important to decide where you're going for your postdoc, so I try to help them day by day. So, and just to tell you, I talked about three babies, here they are, and here if I uh, can translate that, actually this is a frame that my kids offered me two years ago. I think they got fed up with my mantra, which I always say, in life there's no problem, the only solution. I think I said that so many times, so they said, mom, we're going to buy this, you put it in your office, and now you shut up. So, it was just to thank them too, because like, like she said, we are a mom, also a scientist, and you know, everything has to be together. So now let's talk about science. So what did I do in my uh, early years? So I worked, like I said, on the good guys. The good guys are being Streptomyces silicolor, which is one of the most producer of antibiotics. The, the winner is being the penicillium, which is not a bacteria. Ooh, it's a mold. And uh, so I, I spent three years trying to understand how this bug was developing and producing antibiotics. And then in my postdoc, I worked on another bacteria uh, model, which which is uh, Bacillus subtilis. Just to give you an example, it's a champion of secreted enzyme, very useful in industry, but not only. It was just to give you an example. And at that point, I don't know what started in my head, but um, I had enough with good guys, or maybe I was masochist or whatever. I still don't know, but I decided to move to the pathogen. That is not being masochist moving to pathogen, because you know when I started this career, when you are a bacteriologist, you at one point want to go and save the world and cure people, and then to do that, you have to work on pathogen. And my boss at the time, when I came back to France, said, you have a wild card. You pick the pathogen you want. I only want thing you have to find a pathogen, and we set up that for you in Lyon. And I said, OK, let's go to TB. So TB, as you know, is still killing people. Yes, unfortunately, every time I said I work on TB, they look at me with big eyes, like they're killing people. TB is still now. Yes, it is, unfortunately. Why TB is critical? Uh, it's a very complicated organism to work with. It's a slow growing, it's very pathogen. Well, I think that's why I could say I was masochist. And I've been unfaithful since 2010 because I'm working on another pathogen, which is Staphylococcus aureus, also a very nasty one that you probably know. But let's uh, finish on these two nasty bug. And ha here is the scary slide. So I've been to seminar over the summer, and we all have the same slide, meaning that it's not to compete with cancer people. I don't know if some are working on the cancer here. But it's scary to say that in 2050, the prediction says that we will have more death of infectious disease than in cancer. So we keep you know, saying to politics, essentially, that we need money. So they know we need money anyway. But that it's a very big problem. And now we, we try, you know, not, not myself alone, with colleagues and all around, to try to find strategy. And it's not me, I'm, not, I'm, I'm blonde, so I couldn't find a blonde one, I was really disappointed. But we need an urgent need to develop new strategies and new molecules. I insist on new strategies because work, finding new molecules, pharmaceutical companies, they do that. They are able to, to look for new molecules. It's not me, myself, which are going to screen for molecules. So I decided at that point, okay, the pharmaceutics, they do their job. We're trying to find off strategy. And what are the best strategy when you look at the, a, a bacteria? So, uh, once again, I didn't, want, I didn't want to go into the deep details of all the data, but just to give you an overview of what is the strategy, what we want and what we do every day. Is what I, this is what I call the love triangle. So at the beginning, when I started uh, this project, what we realized when you work on host, um, human pathogen, it's the host, it's you, all of us. You have the pathogen and you have the environment, of course. So in the air, in your lungs, for instance, for TB, or in your blood, and in the middle of the this triangle, you have the disease in what we call the host pathogen interaction space. So the point and the strategy was if we could disturb that, find what are the targets to disturb that, we will have a chance to, uh, you know, 
put the, 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 path, the pathogen in trouble. So what do we need to do that? So that's a good idea, but do, what do we need? We need to identify this famous therapeutic target in order to develop specific drug. First of all, we need to understand how the bacteria is working, how it's dealing with its adaptation to find the target. So how we do that? So I did that. I, I used my expertise that I developed on non-pathogen on the first year, and then I decided to move this expertise to the pathogen and see if it would work. And fortunately, and now you all wonder what is her expertise. So my expertise is to work on these proteins, what we call bacterial kinases and phosphatase. So on, and at the time, it was kind of, uh, uh, you know, fighting against the dogma because at that time, these, these proteins, which are key regulators, this is how the bacteria are sensing their environment, the dogma that was bacteria, they're not clever enough, they don't have these kinases, which are usually only, they were only found in eukaryotes, you and me, you know, the upper organism. And with the sequencing of the bacterial genome, we came to the reality that, in fact, they were present in bacteria and that they were important. Anyway, several years later, to make a long story short, we found that these indeed kinase and phosphatase were in major players in, in pathogenesis. And here it's a kinase, and it's to make it quickly, it senses the environment, it's in the membrane of the bacteria. It goes from a status from active to inactive via phosphorylation. And this phosphorylation is going to, I mean, this kinase of phosphorate is interacting with target. And over the years, we could prove that the phosphorylation and the kinase of phosphatase were involved in antibiotic target or in cell division or in metabolism or in cell wall biosynthesis. So you see that one single protein kinase regulator can have a, can have a pleiotropic effect on different pathways. So that was the proof of concept was val validated to say that these molecules are important, as well as the targets to indeed, you know, um, modify and, and, and disturb the, the, the pathogen interaction. So, let's come to the safety prep project. I need some water. I have some here. Sorry. If I'm too fast, you tell me. So, I, I like to uh, present, the, we always thank people at the end of the seminar, and I want to thank them before, then you can have a, an idea of the face of the people I work with. So, let's walk. Mm. So, the, the, what we call the Sefi Pra team is composed of Yogenwa, which visited me last year. He very much enjoyed pay, playing pétanque in the south of France. And uh, here it's Vine, which uh, visited me the beginning of this year. Here is Divya, uh, uh, the PhD student from Vine's lab working on our project. Here it's myself. And here is the research engineer in my lab working on the project. So unfortunately, I couldn't go to India yet. I hoped to go there. But with three kids, that was the only limitation, not going. You know, I couldn't leave them more than two weeks. It was just very complicated. But they're growing, and uh, I hope to to go next year. So quickly, TB, uh, I'm sure you all know about TB, unfortunately. Like I said, it's still killing people. More importantly, 10 million people are infected. You will see that it's important why I insist on the fact that we are carrying TB, which is not only the new infected people. And also, uh, it's especially important for India, as unfortunately, it has the highest burden of TB in the world. So what was the strategy? And, and we were looking for this new therapeutic target with Vine and, and Yogendra. And who? Who we're going to target? So as you understood, we, had, uh, uh, we were collaborating before, and we had quite a good expertise on these phosphatase and kinase. And we decided to investigate a specific phosphatase gene called PSTP. Uh, why PSTP? Like I said, phosphatase are key players during adaptation and signaling. So we were uh, uh, deciding to focus. It might be risky to put you know, all, all your eggs in one pot, but we were confident enough. And at one point, you had to move. So we, we, we move on that one. And the, our idea was if we could disturb this key player, we might interfere with TB survival. And we generate, the first thing to do when you work with that, with the gene, is to generate a mutant. You delete this gene, and you see what happens when you infect in our infection model. So for TB, so far, it's a mice, which is the most relevant, and to check its impact on TB survival. So here is just one, what I call scientific data, is uh, it is just a result of the uh, 
Three years of making mutation, once again working with TB, it takes like a year to make a mutant. It is very long, and thanks to Vinay and Yogendra, all this uh, infection was done in India. They have all the mice facilities, and, and thanks for that. And we, we found that indeed without this phosphatase, we have less mice uh, uh, survival and less granuloma. So let me explain you that quickly. So what we do is we infect mice, and then you see that when it's a wild type, the normal TB, you see this, it I don't know if you see it properly, but it looks, we, what we call granuloma, it's TB making this, it looks like most ulcer. So it's, it's at the end, your lungs is totally colonized with this granuloma and you die. And when you are depleting, so when you infect with the same TB strain, but without this phosphatase, you have less granuloma. We could hardly find one. And when you restore the uh, PSTP, you see the, 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 this granuloma coming back. So we were really happy for once we had proved that it was a good therapeutic target and that we had a less survival of TB in the lungs. But everyone at that time said to us when we were publishing, good, but then only for two million people. It's still good to millions of people. But what is important for TB is to cure the people which are already having TB, latent, because you can have TB latent in your lungs. And for that, we repeated the same experiment, except that this time we infect the mice. We leave the mice for four weeks with the disease, developing the disease. And then at that point, when the granuloma are there, present, we see if we... In, in, in the, pre, in, in the uh, ongoing infection, if the uh, infection is decreasing. And here we could see indeed that it was decreasing. We had less granuloma, and here is when you re uh, uh, infect with uh, uh, the strain re expressing this protein, you have the granuloma coming back. So it means that even if you're infected, if you can deplete this, you have less survival of TB. So we were really happy. And also, we only it's not the only thing we did in three years, otherwise Sefifra will say, what did you do in three years? But in the same time, in my lab, we identified the 150 target of this phosphatase, because like I said, it's a phosphatase, so it has targets, so as well as working on the key player, we also work on the down the line player, and, and I won't go into the details, but with Vine, we have different expertise, and we decided to divide our target based on our expertise and publish this data. We are currently publishing them. So, what is the future, which is the last slide, is now at that point, and actually it's when I came to the CEFIPRA for the end of the contract in May, that discussing with Vinay, we, we had the occasion to pull down all the data. We realized that we, we really had something interesting in the hand, not just in terms of I'm, I'm done. Just, not just in terms of um, uh, fundamental science, but maybe we could find an application. And based on the, what I know, uh, the expertise I have in my lab, actually, because for streptomyces, uh, oh, streptomyces, Staphylococcus aureus, we developed what I call a zebrafish automated plate fluorimetry. To make it simple, we use this model, which is very nice and convenient, much more cheaper than mice. We couldn't do screening on mice. And what we plan to do is we infect our zebrafish with uh, mycobacterium, not the tuberculosis, but marinum, which is the, the, the TB form for the zebrafish. And then we're just going to look with the microscope how the infection is going. And then we're going to string for drugs for that. So everyone, when we write grants, I'm sure you all, part, I mean, at least for people working on pathogen, we always end up our grants saying, we are going to find molecules and do drug screening. But this time, really, I believe that we can do it because first, we have the expertise to do it. We have the good target. And uh, I'm very impatient to interact with people here which are going which are working on drug uh, also uh, design and uh, I'll stop there just a take-home message is that women and science I think you can even if of course it's complicated but I also have two teenagers very hard but uh, the, I try to uh, educate my boys uh, in the right way with a good attitude I will tell you in 10 years if I'm still here, if I succeed or not. And uh, last one, I, I, I wanted just to conclude on that, which is my only participation, uh, participation, is that mentoring, I realized that it was essential. Without the mentor I had, I don't think I'll be the scientist I am now. And then I'm very happy also to say that I'm part recently of this association in France, Famine uh, uh, and Science, and I'll try to help and do what I can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there uh, questions, comments? Yes. They all sleep. They all sleep. They all sleep.
just one uh, question, um, a very naive one. Uh, uh, so the problem with the TB with TB is that uh, very quickly it becomes uh, drug resistant. Yes. Right. Yes. The drug yes. resistant strains uh, come yeah. up. Yeah. 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 Especially uh, in Can I mean India uh, because the antibiotic yeah, is not completed is to its uh, its yeah. course is not completed. Therefore, we have this problem all the more. Uh, the point is, uh, any reason why this particular molecule you have uh, uh, you have high hopes, but again, uh, drug resistance will come up. Uh, so it's very important to study drug, drug resistance, um, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, that's why we, that I'm really happy you, 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 you asked this question and we could discuss because yes, I had many questions after your to. seminar too. It'd be very nice to have your, your opinion. And we wanted to, uh, we do it for Staphorase, which has the same problem of resistance and going. We try to um, mix different molecules. So, so far the strategy is to reuse some known, you know, drugs which are available or unknown, like you do when you, you, you work on the scaffold. Yep. And we hope that by mixing, like the tree therapy you do in HIV or this kind of thing, this is something that is tested. And I really believe in that rather than going for one molecule, spending years going into trial. And then if you don't use it properly, it, it will be like fluoroquinolone, which in two years it was done in resistance. So mm -hmm. yeah, we mm -hmm. have to think ahead and, and probably mix from unknown molecules potentialized with known drugs that we've reused so this can but really be really, really happy to discuss with you and if we can play we have the structure of this protein so i believe we can try to identify you know uh, the 3d structure is solved yes yes so One. we can uh, before that i want to to try to identify the bank and what kind of molecules will be appropriate so sure sure thanks um, are there further questions comments from the audience?